بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hello everyone and welcome to this is football Welcome There is no way this is true There is actually no way this is true One second You have just stifled me Southgate, Manchester United Let me just quickly google news <laughs> Manchester Evening News Gareth Southgate new favorite to be next Man United manager <laughs> oh my lord anyway okay we're gonna talk about this later we're gonna talk about this later um, big up to every single one of you guys make sure you guys are hitting the like button make sure you guys are subscribing to this is football if you're ready to do so everyone watching us right now Hit the like button, subscribe, share this video everywhere. We're back. I took off yesterday. You know, yesterday, took a day off. I'm allowed to breathe. Chat, you frauds. So, yeah, I took yesterday off. Today, we're back on the content. We've got two videos, obviously, this one uh, now. And then later on, we've got A-listers at 11 p.m. UK time. So, we've got so much content coming your way. So, make sure you guys are slapping the like button. Make sure you guys are subscribing to this football if you're yet to do so. Uh, we're going to keep you guys entertained throughout this international break. You know, um, big up to you guys as well for all the love you've shown us on the month of March. Despite it's cold as hell right now and it's raining outside. It's 19th March and it's raining in Jordan and the Middle East. And I'm wearing a hoodie and the heating is on. Listen, maybe Jacob was right. Make sure you use cardboard straws. You get me. So anyway, um, today, obviously, uh, you guys can see on, on the thumbnail who's on the panel. It's not like some form of like surprise. You know, one guy is my favorite. The other guy, I hate him and he's a ginger fraud. And he's late. So let me introduce the guy that I like. And there's only one way to introduce him with his favorite song. North London forever. Whatever the weather. Da -na 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 -na. Go ahead, North London. Turn that off. You let me down. <laughs> Your club let me down. Turn that off. Turn it off. Yeah? About North London forever. You let me down. You had one job. You Filusta Puta let me down. I like Liverpool. I hate them Filusta Puta in Manchester, bro. <laughs> and you let me down. Don't even, don't even try it. Today, halas. Yeah, as you would say, halas today. Halas. Yeah? <laughs> today, halas, please. Because you lot let me down, bro. You let me down. That Uruguayan hmm. Sean Michaels in Darwin Nunes is an absolute clam. Absolute... Say that again, Uruguayan what? The Uruguayan Sean Michaels, bro. <laughs> Uruguay and Shaw Michaels, that filled up that let me down. Mo Salah looking like the Egyptian Tracy Beaker. What happened to him? The pyramid post Malone, bro. What happened to him? Why is he getting substituted off? You got a lot to answer for. So don't come here with all of this. Yeah, we, we I, listen today. I just sang today. North London forever. It's your song. It's your no, no, club no, no, song. No, 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 no. We need answers today because you let me down. You guys let me down. Yeah. Egyptian oh, yeah. Tracy Beaker, bro. Slubber Sly as well. What was he doing? The Poundland Tommy Fury. What was he doing? Huh? Yeah, you're mute. Good. Mute it. Because I, I mute that song when I hear it. I don't want to hear <laughs> North London forever. Nah, you guys let me down. You guys let me down, bro. Hey, we let us down. We let us down to begin with. We let ourselves down. Mm, that game was mm. disgraceful. Robertson. What was going on with Robertson? He was moving in defense looking like Lewis Capaldi. What was going on with him? Wow. What's going on with him? Wow. It's a joke. No, you got a lot. Diaz as well, the Colombian Bruno Mars. What was he doing? I'm getting tired of seeing that guy. I'm telling you right now, you better perform for Colombia. Colombia playing Spain this Friday. You better perform. You know what I mean? I'm going to come to you. Even for Nation, I'm coming to you. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I know you heard my rant. I said when Diaz goes to Colombia, I hope he stays there. That's not someone that you're going to come for and, and, and attack me for. Have some shame, you fraud. Anyway, <laughs> listen. Back, uh, before we get started into the game, you get me? I know, because I know LB want to talk about this as well. So, um, make sure you guys are hitting the like button. Make sure you guys are subscribing. Hit that share button. Shout out to all the, the lovely people, you get me? I was going to download North London forever and actually play it as I intro Northside. But then I realized I might get copyright infringement. Because I can't lie, Arsenal do copyright infringement, a lot of stuff. So, I'm just like, nah. I'm just not going to take that risk, so we're just going to move on. You get me. So, um, man says, United is uh, big up to Josh, who says, Goldbridge says, United are back. Can't be too mad at the team, uh, at the team only third loss in March. 
I hear that, Josh, but this is why, you know, I don't want to open up the sad stories already, you know, but this is exactly why when I sit here, my bro, and we can have general conversations about Liverpool Football Club, you guys don't have to attack me for telling you I feel worried about this game. This is Manchester United's Cup final. Uh, and speaking of, you know what, let's just might as well just start. Tell me, tell me your thoughts, my brother, on, on the game from the outside looking in. Bro, uh, from the get-go, like the first couple of minutes, what were you lot doing defensively? It was all Man United the first 10 minutes. You guys are all over the place. I think uh, Kwanzaa with Gomez, what were they doing for the McTominay goal? Completely just not marking Garnacho. It was easy for him to get in behind. Nobody picking up his man. Nobody marking. McTominay in the box, not being marked. It was just poor defending. But that was the story of the whole game. You guys just poor, poor defending, man. Poor. No one picking up the runner. No one, you know, winning their jewels. No one marking their man. It was poor, bro. Endo as well got absolutely spun for that Anthony goal. Like, come on, man. Close your man down. Like, come on, bro. That, that, that That's poor, bro. Absolutely poor, you know. Elliot as well. Listen, I'm not gonna, uh, bro. The, for the Diallo goal, he shouldn't even be in that position. Where's your fullbacks? Where's your centre backs? How come he's the only one in the defence from a set piece? Yes, he should have cleared it out and kicked it out, but he shouldn't be the only man. You put him in that position. Your manager put him in that position. You know what I mean? And and it was just silly, bro. People talk about the high line when it comes to Tottenham. I'm sorry, Klopp. Klopp. This high line at times. You know what I mean? Just, bro, it, it exposed you. It exposed you. And the thing is, Man United are always able to do that because I've seen Man United come up against Arsenal, even last season, and they were doing that. You know, we're playing the high line and they caught us on the counter. I think it was last season, the first game that we played Man United. They beat us that way. You know, we played the high line. They would be compact and hit us on the break and then they'll catch us cold. And um, I just think, listen, bro, Elliot as well, giving Diaz a chance and he's taken way too long to shoot the ball. It's like the guy is buffering, man. You know what I'm saying? Some Tesco internet. I don't know what was going on with him, bro. Just, just kick the ball, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? And then the Rashford, bro, the thing is, yeah, you guys had the chance. Rashford missing in the 93rd minute. You know, th there was a few things that went your way that you could have won the game. But listen, it, it's just it's just poor, man. Nunes as well. The, the, the pass straight to McTominay. Edge of the box. And Rashford to score. It, bro, it's poor, bro. It's really poor. Yeah, I think it's a combination. Players not taking their chances. Players not marking their man. And the manager as well, not making the right decisions. Taking Salah off before the game is done. Um, and yeah, I, I don't... Listen, I think it's a combination. I don't think it's just on the manager and I don't think it's just on the players. I think it's both, if I'll be, if I'll be honest with you. I, I think the mistake that Klopp made, you, you touched on it there, the substitution. The, that's the problem for me. Like taking off Mo... Listen, at the end of the day, Mo had a bad game, right? But even when he has a bad game, he at least scores. The other three, bro, it's just like, if I speak, I will get put to jail. Never mind the trouble, the other three. I don't know who made Cody Gakpo a footballer. There's time, guys. Listen, Liverpool fans in the chat, keep the crying till later, okay? <laughs> it's time to have a real conversation about these players. Cody Gakpo is a problem. He's a, not a problem for the opposition. He's a problem for us. That's who he's a problem for. How you have a counter-attack 5-on-1 and you mess it up. That's Cody Gakpo right there. Every time the counter-attack, slow motion. <laughs> That's how he counter-attacks. Like, by the time the defender gets to, to the goal, the guy is still at halfway line running. Luis Diaz does all the difficult stuff right, and then when it comes to the easy part, doesn't do it. Can dribble past seven players, but then make a simple pass to the left, he can't. This is this is this is beautiful from Luis Diaz. Darwin Nunez, he gave away the ball for the goal. I thought he actually was okay, at least in that game, you know. But I feel like Darwin Nunez needs a Mo Salah around him in order for him to like to get passes in behind, stuff like that. Because Gakpo and Diaz can't do that. Gakpo and Diaz can't do that. And this is the reality. And I think this game is a bigger indicator for things to come. And I hope I, I really hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm I'm quote unquote, you know, exaggerating my reaction or whatever. But I just think this is a microcosm of what could really what really is the biggest problem you know um and for me look who's here i'm not going to give him an intro not to give him a intro for kdb from wishes here guys anyway so let me just carry on big up lb um so so for, for me i feel like it's just a small indicator of the problems that are gonna arise and at the end of the day we're not gonna win 10 games in a row 
we're really not going to win 10 games in a row. That's why the league title thing. That's why even when I watched Northside's reaction, he done a reaction to my rant. Also, this fraud done a reaction to my rant. Um, you get me? And, like, they both didn't really cook me. They cooked the institution more because it's like, oh, Hussam's been saying this. Like, Hussam's been saying, we're going to drop off, we're going to fall off, etc. And it just happened. It manifested itself in the Man United game. And the, four, the same forwards that let us down versus Brighton and Luton and Manchester City and Arsenal at home are the same forwards that are going to let us down one more time from now to the end of the season. Big up to you, Josh. Salam alaikum in class right now. Big up to you, Smoke. Thank you so much. Make sure you pay attention in class. You get me. Don't 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 be out here BSing, you know, listening to Hussam Northside and LB is not important than your education. So in, uh, pay attention in class. You get me. Unless it's like history or something, then it's just like you can memorize that shit later. Big up to Jack who says, we never lose a game uh, April onwards. We move, brother. Yeah, but uh, Jack, in case you are unaware, my brother, we don't need to lose a game. All we have to do is draw a game. And then it's finito. It is curtains. One draw and class. One draw and I'm doing... If we, if we drop points one more time, I'm doing congratulations video. I'm actually going to do congratulations to Manchester City or Arsenal for winning the league. I'm fully giving up. Like now, at least I have like 7% chance. Now it will go. LB, talk to me about Liverpool Football Club, you know. I'm going to do you for copyright infringement, actually, now. Thank you for everybody. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay no worries. <laughs> um, yo, big up to you, big up to Nostar, big up to chat as well. Um, yeah, listen, I would say uh, about Liverpool, um, I thought you was arrogant. I thought your players looked arrogant in that second half because for... For that first 30 minutes, 35 minutes of that second half, you had total control. I was doing a watch along, and at one point, yeah, I checked the, I checked the possession stats, and that's the second half stats only. You had 72% ball possession, and you was just knocking it around, you know, left, you know, in the middle. And Kobe Miney was just stood on his own in the middle, like completely isolated. And I was saying in the watch along, I said, Liverpool playing a weird game here. Why are they not going for the kill? And Normally, the times that you did attack, it was more sort of tr quick transitions and, and counter-attacking rather than just trying to break United down. I said it in the watch I said, you know, Liverpool playing a strange game. And you know what? Actually, it reminded me of, of how City played against Liverpool at home, how we played against Spurs at home, how we played against Palace, where we only had a goal, goal lead apart from Palace, where we had two. And we just felt we was in control. And I just felt, honestly, I just felt like some of your team was just like maybe just arrogant to the fact that this is United. And maybe you just thought, nah, these guys aren't going to do anything. But said it again in the watch along said that last 10 minutes of the of the first half when you, when united were 2 one down regardless of how shit united are they were always going to press and 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 have chances because that's how football works when you when you were a goal down right we never but killed I, them off basically. you never killed them off and and you didn't look like you wanted to kill them off that's the point uh, so i thought it was very very strange um i have to question your your manager jürgen klopp why he played salah for 90 minutes uh, in the Europa League game when you was already through um, to then take him off um, with that 10-15 minutes to go against Manchester United is one of the most bizarre tactical substitutions I've ever seen in my life. Like, why on earth did he do that? And people were like, oh, to try and get him some fitness against United so obviously he could play 70 minutes. Bro, just play him 30-35 minutes against Sparta you know, in the second half, let him run around and then just give him the full 90 minutes. And then people say, oh, he was tired, he was fasting. Just show him up front. If he's tired, yeah, just say to him, oh, I'm going to take you off the wing because you, you can't run up and down the wing because you're tired or whatever, you don't have the energy. I'm just going to put you up front. You know what I mean? You cannot take off Mohamed Salah. I'm sorry, that's an absolute... Shoot. And I said the same thing about my manager when he took Kevin De Bruyne off against Liverpool. You did. I said you the did. same thing. So this is not bad. This is not me just cooking, yeah? I said the same thing about Pepe for Kevin De Bruyne. These players, yeah, you don't take them off, mate. Strange, strange decision. So I just think that, like... Because you said to me, yeah, in the build-up to this game, oh, this will be a, a tricky game. And I said to you, it won't be a tricky game. And I maintain that it wasn't. See why? See why? You're, you, you, no, see, no. you got disproven as well because you're no, like, I didn't. Oh, you're no, I didn't. Man, no, I didn't get disproven. You no, I didn't. Turned up. You, you was two turned one, up. No, 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 no. You was 2 1 up. And in that second half, you was taking the piss out of them and your fans were going, ole, ole, ole every time you did a pass because they couldn't get near you. The difference is you didn't go for the kill. If you would have gone for the kill yeah. in that second half, you would have scored 3 4 1. Easy. They was they was done out here. Did you not see? I went on Twitter after the game 
And all I was seeing is all the United tweets from like in the second half. And every single United fan was cooking Ten Hag for his subs. They were cooking the players because they were getting absolutely overrun. But you guys, you just didn't take it serious, man. And then Darwin Nunes, yeah, what is he doing? Killer, though, LB. Don't you think that's part of the issue? Part of the issue is the only killer we have up front is Mo. No, 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 that's no, no, no. That's, no, 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 no. You don't do that. Bro. Diaz, Gakpo, and Nunez are not killers. LB, you no, 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 no. You don't do. No, but you still had Salah on for a good 20, 25 minutes that second half. You don't. You don't just go. Oh, we don't have killers. So instead of trying to create chances and put this game to bed, we'll just keep the ball for forty-five minutes. No, that no, no. Not... I agree with you, by the way, I'm in agreement with you. I'm not disagreeing. I'm saying second half we should have uh, killed them all. Hundred percent. We didn't do that. And and the, the uh, five, 50 million counterattacks that we had, where we were just dilly dallying with something that I wanted to see at all. You're right. We should have killed them off. 100. percent 100. percent We should have killed them off. We didn't do that. And I, 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 I I agree with you as well on the salad substitution. But you know what they told me Thursday night when I said why is he playing 90 minutes? They told me stop having an Arsenal mentality. You know, Klopp is taking every game seriously. I'm like, we are 11-2 up. 11-2. The scoreline between us and Sparta is 11-2. They cannot, they're not going to score 13 goals in 45 minutes. So get the guy off and get him rested for Sunday. They're like, oh, we don't have the Arsenal mentality. Take every competition seriously. That's what they told me. Yeah, I just think it's wild, man. Like, literally, United were there for the taking and you just let them off the hook, man. Like, massively let them off the hook in that second half. And it's just, it's crazy, man, because you paid the price. And it was crazy because i seen it coming in a watch along. I said it so many times. I said, they're playing a risky game, man. And obviously, you, you go up in, in extra time. Again, kill the game off. You know, Darwin Nunes, I mean, the, the, part of the problem with Darwin Nunes is you don't want Darwin Nunes on the ball in that area of the pitch because he's a fucking yeah. bozo. I'm sorry, he is a bozo, yeah? And... It, the, the fact that he was on the ball, if I was Klopp, yeah, going forward, I would say to my t my, my players, I said, if Darwin Nunes is in our, our own half, you are banned from passing him the football because he is just a bozo, man. And it was his fault that you ended up losing the game because if he doesn't do that stupid pass. Rapid don't score. You probably win the football match. And then again, the final corner. Listen, I know you want to win it. I know you want to win it in dramatic fashion on a corner, last minute of the game. But come on, man. You can't leave that many. You can leave what Connor Bradley on his own at the back. It's absolutely ridiculous, bro. Honestly, I just think an NGA. Yeah, stop crying in the chat. I'm not blaming it all on Nunes. Have you only literally just come in? I just blamed it on your manager. Yeah, so just hold that. I don't know what you're what you're talking about. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't say. I, did well, I just blame it all on Nunes, it. bro? This guy must be a Nunes protection merchant. Yeah, because I, I mentioned Nunes. I mentioned Nunes' name once. And already people in the comments are going, oh, he's blaming it all on Nunes. He's blaming... No, I'm not blaming it all on Nunes. <laughs> I literally just blamed your manager for taking off for taking off Salah and playing him for 90 minutes against Spa. You know what's bad? Right? The same thing up, happened bro. to me. Same exact thing. I criticised Nunes once and they all go into a man. Well, that was, that was a why... huge, huge bozo error for, for, for Nunes. 100%. He cost us. 100%. Because factually speaking, we were we, we were three two up and we would have won the game, but he gave them the ball. I'm in an English football business, so we are good. Ah, if you're an English football business, خلاص, no need to pay attention. Pay attention to my stream better. It will, it will be more educational than that. Your team was just a reflection of your manager. Look how rattled your manager was. You know what I mean? With the guy that was trying to do a post-match um, interview. You're just getting rattled. Do you know what I'm saying? Over, over too many games. Like Klopp, I, I'm sorry. He's a good manager, but sometimes he's a, he's a big crybaby, bro. Like, why are you getting so rattled? It's a question. You could say no comment. If you really don't want to answer, it's so no comment. You know what I mean? No one can force the words out your mouth. But the way that you guys played, you, you seem rattled. As soon as Man United scored that goal, that's it. You, you man just look rattled, bro. Like, it, it's, it's crazy. I can't lie. He needs to stop crying as well, man. He needs to stop crying. Because he cost you that game as well. And the, the, the reality is, apart from Salah, you ain't got no gun, man. You ain't got no yes. gun, man. Yeah. You know? Well, it's Salah don't Jota, perform. Jota's, performing. Jota's the one, innit? But he's out. Yeah, but he's always out, LB. Remember yeah, in general, well, just say, like, when he is there, if he is there, then he's, he, 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 he is good in front of so God. I right? wanted the forward in Jan. That's exactly why. You oh, so I'm so glad that the people are waking up about Cody Gakpo, yeah, because he is so bad. Like, I remember when you guys signed him, I literally was saying, this is such a terrible signing. And everyone just kept on going, oh, no, he's great, LB. He can play left wing striker, right wing. He's amazing. Just because you can play in multiple positions, that doesn't make you a good footballer. 
Yo, know, Liverpool he's their, new, he's their new Chamberlain, Alex Chamberlain. That's what he is. Bro, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. People now Oxford are so Beckham, obsessed, yeah, Beckham. with players that can play in multiple positions rather than just actually asking the cold hard fact of is he a good player or not. He's not good enough for, for Liverpool. He's just not. Is he shit? No, I'm not saying he's ass, but is he? Should he be playing for a team that wants to win the Premier League, that wants to win Champions Leagues? Just he's just not, and he never has been. So that, that's, a, that's a strange signing. Luis Diaz as well, yeah? People always love to speak about my bro, Jeremy Doku, yeah, about uh, being the next Sam Maximan and having no end product. I'm sorry, what's the difference between Luis Diaz, bro? All I see this guy do is just run down the wing, take players on, and then have absolutely no final product at all. Mm. And that's just a fact. So I'm only saying that because Liverpool fans always love to talk to me about Jeremy Doku, and I held it. I accepted it that, yes, yeah, Jeremy Doku's Final ball is is not the best, and it does need to improve. But you got to have the same energy now with, with Luis Diaz because he does the same thing, and he did the same thing against City as well. So it's not just a one off game. I and feel sorry for Salah, bro. Salah's just 20 there 20. on his ones, man, just trying to fucking help everyone. So the guy's the guy's fasting, yeah, and he's literally just trying to do everything because his teammates are just dead. Zabaz lie. <clears throat> what, what's going on here? I was being told at the start of the season this guy's better than De Bruyne. I'm I'm looking at him now. He's been nicknamed Zabozo. Like, oh, what are we doing, man? What are we doing? Is your season falling apart in front of our very eyes? And the mad thing is, LB, yeah, at least with Doku, yeah, he's young, isn't it? So he may come good. Diaz, this is what he is, bro. He's 27, bro. He's 27. More than likely, he is what he is. So what are you going to do with that one? I can't lie, Sabozla as well. I, I, don't, I, I don't understand the hype. And this is why, yeah, when you see transfer rumours and you see, oh, this player's coming and always oh, the next this is the next that, I don't get over gas, bro. I'd rather just wait, watch with my own eyes. What did he do? What did he do? You know what I mean? Like, bro, you know what with Liverpool, yeah? You guys are too one-dimensional. The way you create chances is one-dimensional. You rely mainly on one person, Trent, when he's available. Scoring goals is now only Salah, when you would divide that before when you had Mane. You're one-dimensional. Your midfield isn't that, that creative, but we've been saying that your midfield isn't that creative anyway. McAllister's a good player. Don't get me wrong. I, I rate McAllister. Endo has actually been good, but these are not players that are going to give you an abundance of creativity. And, and with all the chances you made in the second half, bro, it just goes to show, man. You know, it's not just Diaz. Nunes as well, because Nunes's prime job is to score goals, bro. And what's that guy doing? You know what I mean? So it's crazy. It's crazy. But thank you, my team Benfica. We act good. We act good on that deal. So thank you. You know what I'm saying? We've got more coming Your through. Team Benfica could face me in the Europa League semi final. So be careful, brother, before I cook you for this <laughs> Benfica stuff as well. Exactly. Because clubs say, you know what it is? People like want me to like defend Liverpool and all this. There is nothing that LB or Northside said that's like worthy of, of defending or any of that. I see, you know, people like, you know, I'm not even going to mention his name to give him his, his two minutes of fame, but people just bringing up GA to defend Cody Gakpo is the funniest thing I've seen in my whole life because literally um, five GA of that is in the Europa League and three of them happened in the same exact game against Sparta Prague. So in a, in a dead rubber game. So I feel like bringing up... Uh, I feel like I'm bringing up, you know, this whole GA to just defend players is 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 pointless because where was Diaz's GA when it mattered versus Manchester City? LB will tell you right now. He'll 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 he'll, he'll uh, what's it called? He'll he'll vouch for me. Well, after the City game, I didn't say the referee this, the referee that. The same thing with Northside. I said Diaz should have scored his chances. That was for me. That's exactly why pre-game and post-game I kept the same energy. For me, I didn't care how we dominated Manchester City because we both left Anfield with one point. That's the reality. So we dominated them all we want and we outclassed them all we want and we just left Anfield with a point. So why does it make a difference? Like we literally left Anfield with a point, factually speaking. So it's just it's just pointless. So um, for me, it's just like these forwards have let us down multiple times before. And I said in January, look, we have to sign a, a forward. And the reason why we have to sign a forward is Jota's made from Weetabix. And as soon as he's injured, you guys see, you know, guys injured, you know, and the rest of them is just not good, you know. And I feel like 
from now on, like every time you just criticize any of the players, they just automatically start throwing GA at you and stuff. At the end of the day, this team is not good enough to win the league, in my opinion. And there is nothing stopping Gakpo, Diaz, Nunez from bullshitting on another game, whether it be the same United game away at Old Trafford, whether it be Everton away in the Merseyside Derby, whether it be, um, you know, Aston Villa away, whether it be Spurs at home. They are capable of doing the same exact BS again which is exactly why I'm not confident of winning the league. The only way we win the league is if we win 10 from 10 and City and Arsenal drop points, which I, which is genuinely just not going to happen, you know? So this is why I'm not running an underdog narrative. I just don't, I just, I genuinely believe we're the underdog. It's not a narrative. It's not a thing I'm doing for YouTube. I fully believe it. Like, I fully believe we're the least likely team to win, to win the league. LB and Northside will tell you this. They've been working with me all year long. So, you know? Before we move on with with uh, with with uh, with uh, with uh, with, the, with the Arsenal City game, obviously there's 570 people in here. Big up to all of you guys. You get me midday Tuesday. Uh, make sure you guys are hitting the like button. Make sure you guys are subscribing. I want to get to 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 300 likes ASAP. So guys, hit the like button. Hit the like button right now. Subscribe. Yalla, let's let's get the, the party started. Make sure you guys are liking, subscribing. 500 people in here. You guys are moving like the Liverpool front line. Big up to Jack who says, Northside getting this out before City take on Arsenal. Uh, before City cook Arsenal, sorry. I actually think Arsenal are going to get something against City, but we'll address that in a second. Just hold tight. So, yes, Northside. I think you are going to get something. So, with... Um, let me ask Northside this question, actually. Now that Liverpool are out the FA, from a more positive perspective, do you think the fact that Liverpool have less games should have the other teams worried or no? No. no. Other teams worried? What, what do you mean the other teams worried? Arsenal, in particular. Both listen, Man teams. City, I, I don't see... I don't, listen, the mentality of Man City is different. I don't think that's going to rattle them at all. Arsenal is different because... We, we've been we've been we've been weak mentally for the last twenty years. You know, if uh, we don't win against Bayern Munich, I'd like to see how this club reacts. You know, because we always see a meltdown towards the end of every season when it comes to Arsenal. So, yeah, listen, it is what it is, man. Listen, um, Arsenal, <sighs> bro, we'll see. You know, we got Man City. We lose that. Let's see how the mentality of this team, um, if they're able to push us over the line, if we if we lose to Man City. Bayern Munich is another test for mentality. If we if we lose against Bayern Munich, um, does that affect our league run? Um, if we get kicked out of the Champions League, does that affect our, our league run? We'll see. We'll see. Um, I don't believe in my team's mentality because I haven't seen it for 20 years. So that's why I'm sceptical. A bit like how why you're sceptical with Liverpool for other reasons. So, yeah, man, we'll see, bro. We'll see. You know I don't, I don't rate this manager, so he has to prove to me why I should believe in him. LB, you worried now because Liverpool have less games, quote unquote? No, bro, that's not how football works, man, for me. Yeah, Arsenal got knocked out of every competition last year and bottled it. Said it at the time, that wasn't a good thing. I mean, I heard, I remember listening to Talk Sport and all the Arsenal fans ringing up after the FA Cup game where we beat, when we beat them, saying, it'll be great, we're out of a competition, we can focus on the league. It's not how football works. It's not how football works, man. Momentum is one of the most important things in football. Playing every three days is a good thing if you have the squad for it. Keeps the momentum up. If you have a if you have a bad result, two days later you're playing another match, you can get it out of your system with a win. If if you drop a game now, obviously you've still got the Europa League, so it doesn't fully 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 apply yet. But if you if you're playing one game a week, yeah, like Arsenal were last year after they got beat off Sporting Lisbon, and you you get a bad result in the Premier League, you're waiting all week, bro, until you're playing another game. Now, I'm not a psychologist yet, but I don't think that's a good thing, mate. Because all you're thinking about in training is just negative thoughts, man. Negativity. Yeah? You, you, you play on the Saturday, you don't play another game until sat the Saturday, maybe the Sunday. Could be over a week in some cases. I don't think that's a good thing. I think when you go in for stuff and you're under pressure, the best the best thing is just to be playing football constantly. Because it just keeps, it keeps you from dwelling on things too much. Keeps the players on thinking about mistakes too much. You know what I mean? So, nah, I don't think it's a good thing. Do I think it will impact you massively? No, because you're still in the Europa League. So, I don't really see it as a massive issue. But I'm just addressing the wider sort of thoughts that people put out there where playing one game a week is a good thing. I just fully disagree with that statement 100%. Otherwise, Spurs would be chilling in the top four. 
No, I mean, Spurs. Where, where, where the reason this happened, by the way, because 13 14 was an anomaly season in which the club wasn't in the Champions League, it wasn't in the Premier League, it wasn't in, 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 in the Europa League, and we ended up challenging for the league. And the same thing happened with Chelsea. I think when they finished 10th and they ended up winning the league, but that's with like a completely different scenario. If City had one game a week, it would be different, you know? I believe to an extent as well, if Arsenal had one game a week, possibly, maybe if we had one game a week, like these three teams on the panel fairs. But I think like, I agree with LB, maybe like a Man United or a Spurs or a Villa. We just saw it with Spurs. They just lost 3-0 to Fulham. Like at the end of the day, playing one game a week isn't always a blessing. It could be a blessing depending on your manager, on the scenario, all of that. So, you know, that's that's what I want to talk about. So, you know, just moving on from Liverpool now, I, I love the fact that I go on these shows and, and I never get cooked because I just called all of this. I love it. And, you know, people in the chat who are crying, I've, I'm writing down names. I'm writing down names. When we end up losing the league, we're going to speak, guys. We're going to speak. When we end up losing the league, me and you are going to have a conversation. You get me? I'm going to call you all of you out. Um, You know, who are here calling me negative and toxic and just not supporting the club and all this shit. Because you, there's people who actually sit there and believe we're going to go 10 from 10, which is not going to happen. But yeah, enjoy your time, though, guys. I'm writing all your names down. I'm going to call you guys all out when City or Arsenal are lifting the Premier League. I'm gonna I'm gonna call you guys out. So anyway, let's let's move on to to the other two clubs before I lose my mind. Um, hit the like button though, guys. <laughs> hit the like button and all that good stuff. Almost 600 people in here. So um, the guy mentioned it in the super chat. You get me. There is a certain game that's uh, going to happen. You know, after this international break. Now I don't necessarily want you guys to preview because it is in a long ass time. But like, you know, initial feelings headed into that game. Let me go to Mr. Home Team uh, first, you know, after beating Newcastle with two deflected goals. Talk to me about uh, the feeling you, you have uh, headed into that game. Initial I'll just feeling. mention, yeah, deflected goals, yeah. All the games we've lost this season have been deflected goals, you know that? <laughs> That's not true. That's not true. It's not true. It's not true. So Maybe Arsenal not. wasn't... Arsenal, deflected goal. Aston Villa, okay, deflected, that's goals. Correct. That was Wolves, deflected goal. Wolves, deflected goal. Three games we lost in the Premier League this year, all deflected goals. Wolves wasn't deflected goal. Yeah, it was. It was a cross that we got deflected and it went straight in. That yes, was the was. that was the first goal. But it was still a deflected goal. We lost 2-1. And the second goal you completely ignored from the Korean guy Huang. You fraud. Yeah, but you he should have been on the pitch. He was fucking he should have been off. And the draw against Palace, what deflected goal was there, huh? The the draw I against didn't say, Chelsea, I didn't say that said Els. That was a draw. That was a draw, Hassan, yeah. Yeah, listen, that's besides the point. Forget deflected goal. You get me. Just let's just get you, back. You brought it up. But it's true though. You scored two deflected goals against Newcastle. Why does a fact rattle you? It's a fact. You're, yeah, because what you're trying to do there is play down. We was totally dominant. You only had one shot on target in that game, Newcastle. Okay. One. You had two I'm shots total. I I, we was absolutely dominant, dominant in that game. We've not he lost the football match. The yoga stretches my statements. You see, he keeps stretching my statements. LB, I never said that. I never said you weren't dominant. I just said you scored two deflected goals, which is true. You did. Yeah, but we, we all know what you're trying to do there, bro. We I'm not know. trying to do anything. Yeah. I'm just saying you scored. You, I'll just say this one thing. Yeah, you better win the Premier League, mate, this year. Because if Jurgen Klopp, yeah, your greatest ever Premier League manager, leaves after nine years with a single Premier League. And by the way, you better hope that City do win the Premier League if you don't. Because if Arteta wins the Prem, yeah, and he's on the same amount of Premier Leagues as Jurgen Klopp, after your greatest manager in the Premier League era. Ooh, there's going to be some difficult conversations right there. Anyway, um, yeah, we was completely dominant against Newcastle, to be honest with you. They had uh, only two shots in the whole game, one shot on target, uh, which they probably should have scored, to be fair. Um, and yeah, listen, I, I actually felt for the first time this season, that was a match that sort of resembled the team that we we were played like last year. Like, it, it reminded me a little bit of the... Uh, of, of the treble treble side last year with the amount of dominance. Now, I, I can't be 100% confident on that because Newcastle are, are ass. Um, I have to say that. I have to hold my hands up and say they are a terrible team. Um, but we still did our job right. Um, I'm, I'm confident going into that game. Hopefully, we're going to have a full-strength squad. Uh, there is just some news breaking that Erling Haaland has limped out of training um, for Norway today, which isn't oh, ideal. Um, yeah. but, but it sounds like Providing that's okay. Game. Yeah, yeah. But providing that's okay, it sounds like this game against Arsenal will be the first game this season that we're, we've we got our full strength squad, our full strength 11. Yeah, so I'm 
I'm going to be confident in this game. We've got a decent record against Arsenal generally, especially at home. Um, and, and, and yeah, man, I think if we win this game, I'm going to get my chest out because you got, although it was the FA Cup, you guys, that performance against United, it made me believe that actually you might drop more points than I I, I, I previously had. What I'd, have I been said. telling you, Ron? No, no, but yeah, no, but you've been saying it, but I needed to see it with my own eyes. You know what I mean? And I didn't think that you dropped too many points. Having watched that game, I'm now starting to get confident. That, I'm not saying you're going to fall off or like capitulate, by the way. I'm just saying I think you might drop. Because previously, I think as we've had this discussion, uh, I think we discussed it as well last week on, on a show with Northside as well. I think I said maybe there's two games that I, I thought that maybe you could drop points. Maybe I'll increase that now to maybe like four games are at risk or something four. like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So now I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm more confident now because that means we could probably be able to drop points in a game, maybe two max. Um, so yeah, listen, I'm <clears throat> I'm confident for the game. It's going to be tricky. I still a good side, but listen, I've got my full strength team out. We're looking, we're looking all right, and, and we've not lost a game since beginning of December. People, I don't think people give us enough credit for that, man. That's a long fucking time. Last time we lost a game was Aston Villa away. That's the beginning of no- November. You know, we we're, we're nearly four months in. You know what I mean? Like, so we're, we're doing all right. So, yeah, but I'm looking forward to it. I, I just think that it's, it's time for the players to perform. We usually do good in this this period. You know what I mean? Rodri's been chatting as well, saying when we're back, we, we, we're going to see the real Man City. Because that's the thing that we've we've not seen City play well, like properly well this year, other than maybe like little 20 minute spells. Like, you because like last year when we were slamming teams, we slammed Arsenal away, we slammed Real Madrid, we slammed Bayern. We haven't seen any of those performances this year, not once, other than like little 20 minutes here and there. So I'm hoping that after this international break, we're going to click. I'm backing that we will. I'm backing that we'll get the win. I don't think we'll smash them. Yeah, I don't think we'll smash them. I think it'll be a tight game, but I think we'll have the experience to get through it. There you go. Oh, me? Yeah, listen, um, for me, I look at it like this. Listen, you're, you already know I always respect I always respect City. Um, but the thing is, if I'm gonna be look at it fair, of course City should be beating Arsenal. Uh, you've got a better manager, you've got better individual players, but it took City 56 minutes to break down Man United. Man United sat deep, didn't open up, and they only really started they only conceded once they started to try to play football and open up at the back. City for 56 minutes was struggling to break them down. Um, we already know when Arsenal face City, we don't play the way that we normally play. We, we show them respect. Um, two banks of four, everybody behind the ball. Uh, don't give them no space in behind. Um, so there's definitely a chance of Arsenal beating City. Um, and it's really down to City breaking us down because we'll transition the ball a lot better than Man United. Uh, we will have, you know, certain counter attacks, but, you know, but it depends if we're going to be clinical enough. I, I still don't feel like Havertz is clinical enough. So I don't, I can't trust him to get the goal. You know, we needed Havertz to score against Porto. He didn't score. That was another game that he could have showed us that he can come up clutch. The only thing Havertz really offers his team is goals. And he doesn't score enough of them. So in reality, uh, I see reasons for either side, really and truly. Um, like, like LB said, you, you guys ain't playing scintillating football. This season, it hasn't all clicked the way your manager wants it to click. And we're not going to open up and play a high line against you lot. So it's really down to City breaking us down. We're not going to be naive. I don't expect us to. Because our last encounters, we haven't really opened up and played the way we played. where we, you know, blitzing Sheffield and blitzing Burnley and teams like that. We're not going to play like that against, against LB's team. So it's one of them ones. But you can see that Man City, they struggle. If you, if you, if you defend properly and defend deep, they, they struggled. Yes, they got over mm. the line of Bernardo's goals against Newcastle. They, listen, you create your luck. I'm not going to bash them with, our, oh, you know, deflected goals. You create chances. You create your luck. At the end of the day, he took the shot. He took the chance. He got the goal. Um, the day, yeah, well, Arsenal fans were very excited when with the Martinelli deflection that beat Man City. Nobody, nobody spoke about luck then. So That's I'm not going to be a hypocrite and now say, oh, well, it's luck. You guys had deflected shots against Bernardo. You scored. You know what I mean? So keep the same energy. Um, and the end of the day, you have to create your chances. But listen, Arsenal don't have a gun, man. Arsenal are, are the underdogs. And yeah, we don't really have a bench that can really affect this game if the starting 11 doesn't do anything. You know, we got much of a muchness 
apart from really Trossard. So it's one of them ones. But then, like I said, I was very surprised at how easily Man United shut them down in the first half against City. And they look lost. They look lost in that. So we could take from that and try to apply that. But we need to go forward. You need to go forward better than Man United, better than Newcastle. And um, do what we did when we got the, the win against them um, with the Martinelli deflection. Do you know what I mean? But um, obviously a, a draw for either team isn't really good enough. It's not good enough with how close we are on points. So it is what it is. I, I can see a draw, but I can also see City winning it. But I can see a scenario where Arsenal are sitting it. it Arsenal are winning it. it. It's one of them ones, bro. It's one of them ones. It's a tough one. Stylistically, they don't nullify us, but we have to try and nullify them. That's the thing. They're not going to play like a Porto. But then at the same time, with limited, with limited chances, who's our gunman? Saka's not a gunman. Yeah, he's a good player, but he's not a gunman in front of goal, which is why we needed a striker in January. Then you look at Martinelli, not a gunman. Trossard, he's not a gunman. Havertz and Jesus, not a gunman. So with limited chances, are we going to score? I don't know. I feel like my team score goals when we have volume of chances because we don't have a clinical goal scorer. So No, that is true. That is true. You need a volume. But well, the one thing I'll say, uh, uh, though, is, look, I, I appreciate Rodri coming out and saying, like, oh, my God, you're going to see the real city after the break and all that, like, you know, fighting words and stuff. No problem. You know, he's, you know, Man City, Man City players, because of obviously their success, they could threaten people. I understand. They could say big words like that. But for me, I haven't watched Man City in a while. LB just said it himself before the City fans started crying. I haven't watched City for a while and been like, yo, they are incredible and scintillating and amazing. While with Arsenal, I think Arsenal are actually the other antidote to Man City. Because Arsenal have unlocked a Diego Simeone gene of just playing disgusting defensive football. And I think if they do that against Manchester City... They just need to take their chances on the counter-attack. I actually fully believe that this game is not going to end in a City win. I really think it'll either be Arsenal win or a draw based on, on just like what I've seen. I just think Arsenal have been so good from a defensive perspective. Just so good from a defensive perspective that I just don't think they're going to just like get destroyed. They're going to get like, they're going to lose that game. And for, for from my perspective, I'm going to say this right now. For me personally, after seeing Arsenal drawing Bayern, I would actually want Arsenal to beat City more than I would want a draw. I don't don't do I don't do like short termism. I'm doing long term. And Northside said it just now, which I agree with. We haven't had evidence of Arteta playing midweek prem, midweek prem, midweek prem, and not messing it up. And the reality is Arsenal. If you look at their fixtures um, after Manchester City. Their fixtures as follows. Because Man City, listen, it'll be BS for me to say anything because that's after the international break, right? So if you look at that, the kind of like period with the European games, you've got Brighton away, Bayern at home, Villa at home, Bayern away, Wolves away, and then Spurs away. All of that in the space of like a week and a half or two weeks, whatever. So for me, from my perspective, I take that risk. Of having of waiting on Arsenal to drop points in one of those games, rather than take a risk of City dropping points when I stop when I know City live for this type of moment anyway. So like that's 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 what I'd say. Um, I just I, mean, I just don't know how LB could be any confident in City getting anything. Why 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 uh, are you actually why, confident? Well, well, I don't know what do you mean. Why would I be confident? My team's why not lost since December. We've got an incredible record against Arsenal. We should have a fully fit squad for the first time all season. Mm -hmm. Like why? Why wouldn't I be confident? The way you've been playing though and stuff, you don't just, matter. You I don't. I don't think that matters. I don't think form. I don't really think form comes into this at all. I don't think form comes into it. I just think it's at the end of the day, it's a, it's a game because Arsenal will will change the way that they play in this game. As will City. We'll both be a bit more cautious because we won't want to mm -hmm. lose the game. Like like actually at the Emirates, if you look at the Emirates, the Emirates was a bit of a shit game because both teams didn't want to lose it, um, and it was it was very very narrow. Um, but LB, me and you have the same problem. How many wins do you have against the, the big six? Um, well, two if you include United. Okay, no problem. We have one. Include the yeah, but, but, but it, again, it's it's at the end of the day, it's like I'm going into this game thinking it's 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 about who handles the pressure because it's going to be a massive pressure game. Or the eyes mm -hmm. of the world are going to be on this game. And my team has shown multiple times over the years that it is able to handle the pressure. I think being at the Etihad is going to help us as well. Yeah, I mean, we've got a great record there, not, not lost there since December 2022. 
Yeah, that's the last time he lost at the Etihad Stadium. So, you know, to say why would I be confident? That's a, that's a, that's a mad question, bro. I can't lie. That is that is that is. Crazy. That's not a mad question at all. Oh, City fans are so question. I'm just saying Arsenal are coming to town. No, 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 no. You just said to me, why am I confident? Despite my team not losing at the Etihad since December 2022, we're in 2024, by the way. Yeah, we're, and, and, and you know why you're a fraud? December 22 was not three seasons ago; it was one year ago. Brent, I didn't say it was. I didn't say it was three seasons ago. Exactly, it was a season ago. Why you act right. like it's been nine years? I'm saying it's 2022. Okay, and 2022 plus plus two is what 2024. Where you know where we're like 15 months in. We're like 15 months since we lost there, bro. Could Does you have won the draw? We Andy. we um so we would be three points behind you with an inferior goal difference. It, yeah, but it's not ideal. I would probably say no, to be honest. I get but, why LB doesn't does is not phased. How many years did he go up against Klopp and the Liverpool team pushing him all the way and it wasn't phased? It's it's fair for him to say that. Well, why should we be phased? Year after year, clock pushing, pushing, pushing. Liverpool relentless didn't phase them. Still got over the line, so I can understand why he's not he's not phased. A bit also as well, seeing the way we capitulated last season, you know what I mean. Why would he feel like okay? Well, we picked you last season. You're eight points clear. <laughs> you're you're within touching distance now. Why why are we gonna why are we gonna fear you for? We've seen you. You've seen you guys bottle it. Also as well, I think my manager people give a a, a lot of praise for the way that we play football. And he deserves that. But at the same time, there's the other side of the, of the coin. Arteta up against uh, a system that nullifies the way that we play. What's his answer? You know, this is now after passing Porto, good result. But what have I seen in those two, over those two legs to show me that if not Man City, because they won't shut up shop and play a defensive football that yeah. nullifies the way that we play. But against, you know, for the run against to win the league, which is the bigger picture. What, what, what What's the answer? Because I've not seen anything. You know, people told me about corners and set pieces. We don't score, score from all the set pieces. We had set pieces against Porto. We didn't score. You know, people are telling me, oh, but we got Kai Havertz. He wasn't clutch in either game. He was not clutch. So this is the thing, bro. There's there's two sides of the coin with Arsenal at the end of the day. We, we look great when we're allowed to play. And when we're not allowed to play, we look rattled. And we don't have a bench nor a manager that, can, that, that has the antidote to that, that can change anything. So I get why uh, LB feels... Feels confident. Listen, Walker this season, I think, has made a lot of individual mistakes. Uh, I don't think Newcastle, that's something that we can exploit. There are things that we can try to exploit against City, but at the same time, Haaland, half a chance against Man United scores. You know what I mean? Bernardo has that winning mentality. Foden this season has turned up clutch and clutch moments. This is all facts. This is not me going off of my emotion. These are, these are facts. People say that, oh, they have to rely on Haaland. Not really. Foden's picked up the baton this season when they've needed goals. He scored pivotal goals this season. Bernardo's scoring goals. You know, Doku, yes, they're carrying Do They're carrying Doku and Haaland and look where they are. This is the problem. And we don't know when this team could click. I remember last season when Gundogan all of a sudden started pushing them through. They could have that again this season. Yeah, but do they have that though this season? Do they have a Gundogan and Amaras? Do they, do they have it? Maybe not Amari, but, but I, I think Foden has taken a lot of that mantle from, from Gundo. Would I say he's like for like exactly the same? No, I think Gundo was one of their best players. And uh, I, I agree with Rance. I he think he was that. their best player in the running, like the last three months. Yeah, Rance said that. And I actually said, you know what? I agree with you. I agree with yeah, you. He was that. their best player. and But Foden has come up clutch, bro. Bernardo's now starting to step up. Haaland will score goals. And the thing is, all you need is a striker that give him a half chance and he'll score. He will get some chances to the end of the season. And you can see that he will bury them. So at the end of the day, no, is, it, is it fair to say this is the most confident you'd be headed into a city game? Not confident as in like, oh, we're going to destroy them, but like probably before you thought you were going to get peppered, this time you, you'll feel a bit different about it. We're probably in our best form. Yes. We're probably in our best form. That that's fair to say. We're in our best form. Um but yeah, man, listen, it is what it is. doesn't matter if you're in good form, bad form. I've seen Arsenal be in great form, go up in the North London derby and get slapped. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it doesn't really matter about certain games. It doesn't matter about form. We was in great form going in against Porto. We stunk it out both legs. That's true. So, so form can only take you so far. You can't really base football off form because then we'll say football wouldn't be as unpredictable as it is.
So is it um, is Martinelli back by the way for the game for this specific game? I've not heard that Martinelli is a problem for the game. I saw that Gabriel was not going for Brazil because apparently it's a, they're saying it's a precaution. Oh. Apparently a precaution. Yeah, but like you, Hussam, I called out my club. I said, "What have we done in terms of our recruitment as a centre back? Oh, we've got Ben White." Oh, we've got Kivio. Okay, no problem. No problem. If man them tell if if the, if the fan base are telling me that's good enough to fill in, cool. They better we better not flop then. Don't don't use don't use the bench as an excuse then. At the end of Gabriel the day, doesn't play against Man City. I can't lie to you. City winning still. I take back everything. <laughs> take back he'll everything be fine, I say. If nah, I see, he'll be fine. No, 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 one second. If I see, I know because I have to clarify to the people. I have to clarify to the to the people in the chat. If I see Kuyor left center back and Zinchenko left back, خلاص, it's gonna be it's gonna be City. It's gonna be City win. I take back everything I said. I'm wrong. I'm Look telling you from now. Yeah, no, no because the only way this happens is if Gabriel and Saliba plays. They have to play. They have to play for Arsenal to get anything of this game. I'm very real. I'm just taking this back. I want Arsenal to win at the Etihad because I still think this is the still big blue irritating monster that I just want to punch in the face. Not LB specifically, as in like Man City. But like, you know, bro, I hate Man City, man. I need Arsenal to get something. And now they're saying, Gabriel, listen, I hope both Gabriels are good. And hope Martinelli can torch Kyle Walker because that guy, you know, he's been, he's definitely been a weakness. Are you good, Hussam? Just checking on you, German chicken win. German chicken win, you fraud. <laughs> this is your first super chat to this channel in forever. And first of all, you come here, you send two, so you can hold that, you get me? And third of all, you've been on my case every time Liverpool drop points. Why aren't you here when City drop points? You know, these two guys are here, we'll lose or draw. Uh, Northside has been on the channel after Arsenal lost and after Arsenal uh, won. LB shit draws and he's been here. Why do you hide? Your name is Chicken Wing and you really are Chicken Wing. You are a chicken. You're always hiding. I hate you, bro. When you're going to fight one day. Now, Hussam making a hit list is hilarious. Stream titled end of the season. There you are. Come back like a bitch and apologize. I can't wait. Yeah, bro, because you think I don't see all these people bitching in the chat. Three quarters of them are gone. Where's Andre gone since the game? I'm not going to mention someone else before I get, you know, life-threatening messages. But they know where they are. All these people who called me negative are now nowhere to be seen. At least the people who wanted to have an objective conversation are still in the chat. You know, some people are still arguing with me till this day. No problem. You should make it the Liverpool register. You know, like at school. LB, are you in? Are you in? LB? Yep, yeah, LB. Yeah. yeah. Hussam, hand up. Okay, yep, Hussam. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have the names. I have the name. I'm there. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. Bro, I'm ready. Bro, these guys think I'm ready. I'm the... Bro, I'm ready. I'm ready. All these people went. Where is Ryan? Huh? 4 99 to embarrass to someone back again podcast. Where are you now? I want my 4 99. I want my 4 99 now. Hussam, you're right. I'm a dumbass. That's what you should send. Fraud. Anyway, uh, big up to 90 Stephen 1008. <clears throat> What a name that is. Why those numbers specifically? Um, do you think Arsenal will handle the pressure of Champions League and the Prem? Their fans are even disrespecting a Real Madrid team who only lost two games all season. Northside, how many Arsenal players start for Real Madrid? None. There's <laughs> <laughs> a truth though, am I lying? None. Not nine? Huh? <laughs> not not nice. Nice. Yeah. this guy no but it's good though it's good it's good let them keep running up their mouth because at the end of the season if we don't win it don't tell me it we, nobody expected us because they're expecting us if they're expecting us good i expect us to win as well and if we don't don't duck don't duck the criticism don't duck the heat don't duck the smoke if you're saying if you if you're talking big this is the problem with my fan base not everybody obviously the majority they talk big when it all comes crumbling down, VAR, referees, pundits didn't believe. There's toxic fans in the fan base. Oh, injuries. Nobody expected us. Youth project, phase four. Nah. If you men are saying that we're good enough to win it, we should win it then. At least one of them. Fairs, fairs, fairs. I actually think you're going to beat Bayern because, you know why? Because Bayern are crap. That's why. Like, I actually have not watched them once and been impressed this season. Um, you know, but hey, 
Well, uh, I wanna I wanna ask you guys about something before we wrap up because I don't want to keep you guys for too too long. First of all, big up to all of you guys. Make sure you guys are slapping the likes. Make sure you guys are subscribing to this is football if you're yet to do so. Big up to Josh. Big up to Smoke. Big up to Jack. Big up to Frankie, Stephen, and that chicken can hold that. But the rest of you guys, big up to all of you guys. Make sure you guys are slapping the like button. Make sure you guys are subscribing to this is football. How many likes are we on? We've got 650 people in here. You frauds. Because there is a topic I have to ask you guys about. I feel like this topic will come together, guys. It's going to come together. You know, we're going to have a great conversation. So we're on 225 likes. Guys, come on. Hit the like button. My favorite panel panelist. Hope it ends in a draw. I don't hope it ends in a draw because I feel like that's more short-termism than anything. Like, in the short term, yeah, I'm going to be happy to be top of the league match week 30. But I'm trying to be top of the league match week 38. Match week 38 is I need City to lose. That's how. You know, so, yeah. Big up to you, oh, Sam's Diet fan. Enigma's back for you, Northside. This fraud is waiting on his team to lose. Yes, Northside. You waiting on them to lose? No, oh, we got a Mystic Meg super chat then, innit? He can read my mind. He can read my mind. You know what I mean? Sorry, Mystic Meg. Yeah, no, I'm not. At the end of the day, deliver. That's what I want. Yeah, because whether we win or lose, my channel will still be here and I'll still be pumping content. So it is what it is, man. It is what it is. Sorry, I, I don't tell you what you want to hear. I'm not your mum. So <laughs> I just say it as it is. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I say it as it is. Maybe I've never lost a game in two months anyway. When was the last time Arsenal lost the game to begin with? It's not like Northside deleted his channel. Oh, Arsenal are winning. Come on, you guys. Yo, man. I can have the thumbnail, yeah? Me like this. They still <laughs> complain. I'm toxic and negative. <laughs> the title of the show is we did well we smoked and i'm like this they're still angry bro smiling. there's nothing you can do there's He's nothing smiling. you can do bro you know no, 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 i'm smiling but i'm toxic and negative i'm angry big up to, to my guy gag and says Osama, we finished the season with only league cup a uh, club in eight years one premier league one champions league, one fa cup two league cups um i can't lie his time isn't a failure but massive underachievement it pains me uh, but it's true, in my opinion. I, I think, Gag and Deep, if that does happen, then we will have that unfortunate conversation at the end of the season. But I do agree with you, though. Us winning just the Carabao Cup this season is not good enough. You know, maybe if we win the Europa League, it's a bit different. You know, obviously, two European trophies in his time, stuff like that. But I just hope the direction we head in is a less stubborn direction, a more open direction. A direction with Michael Edwards, who was the guy that helped to Liverpool to get to this direction, who quit his job because of Klopp. People who watch this channel knew that from two years ago. Uh, you know, we had so many conversations on the importance of Edwards. I hope he's there and he just takes us to the, to the, to, to the next level. And I hope we do get like a manager and a structure and a way of doing things that's a lot more sustainable than, you know, huggy, huggy, lovey, kissy, kissy, let's all get together and sing you know, kumbaya songs. I, that's just not not what I want. I want a more sustainable way of winning, my guy. guy can but I think it's, it done. definitely is underwhelming. I if we win just that one. After Klopp leaves, I think you lot are done. At the, at the, elite, at the elite table for a while. I, I do. I really do. I agree. But, I disagree because we've got Michael Edwards. He, he's not on the pitch playing football, bro. He's also not managing That's true, team. but he makes important decisions upstairs. That's what I'll, that's what you, you, know what, you know what Michael Edwards does? I'll tell you what Michael Edwards does. Because this relates to the final segment that I want to ask you guys about. You know what Michael Edwards does, um, LB? He makes smart footballing decisions. And we must all come together, all three of us. And finally, we can come together without fighting. I can ask you guys a question. Guys, <clears throat> breaking news. You get me? I need to hear you guys' opinion. <laughs> Manchester Evening News. Hey! <laughs> Gareth Southgate is now a new favourite to be next Man United manager as Sir Jim Ratcliffe makes a decision. Chat, whether you support Arsenal, City or Liverpool, this is a moment. This is a moment where we all come together. This is a moment where we all smile regardless of who you support. Gareth Southgate is now favourite to manage Manchester United. Tell me, tell me you guys' initial <sighs> thoughts on this because this is actual breaking news. It happened like an hour ago. What, what do you guys think? I think Man United fans should be happy. It's going to be a project youth. Look at what he's done with the youth in, in the in England international system. Nobody expected them to be there. I think <laughs> you should back him. Don't be toxic and negative. Give him a chance. It's going to take him up to phase eight or, or eight or nine, but just back him. He needs time. He needs his players. Don't judge him on the results. 
Do you know what I mean? Because it's not his squad. He's inheriting a toxic Man United squad, so you need to back him. Get behind him. Anyone that calls him out, you're fake red. Piss off down to Anfield. And I think it's a great, great day. The club is moving in the right direction. New merch soon to drop. You know what I'm saying? I think, it, listen, Gary Neville's going to be coming out with new merch. I think you lot should be happy, man. You know, God willing, this happens. God willing, please. 10 years for him. 10-year contract. Yeah, they're finished. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to say, man? Oh my god! <laughs> two words, two words. I'm finished. Uh, oh, it's true. Oh. <laughs> Bro, this no, can't happen. Oh, my god. This is—I uh, oh. don't know what else to say, man. If this happens, yeah, this is just a madness. This guy, do you know this manager? Right, I'll be serious. The only thing he's ever won in his career as a manager is the too long tournament. You know what that is? It's an under 17s tournament. That's all he's ever won as a manager, bro. That's it. How he, I mean, how is he still England manager? Numero uno, yeah. Numero dos. How is he being linked with Manchester United? What does this manager actually do to get these praises, man? It's absolutely wild, man. It's wild. I hope. To, to God, yeah, I'm, I'm with I'm with North Side on this one, innit? I hope to God that this happens, bro. Because if this happens, this is like the final chapter of the Manchester Manchester United downfall. You know what I mean? We've since Ferguson left, we've been reading the book, and it's been a sick sick book, yeah. But we're at the final chapter now, and it's the Southgate chapter, and then there ain't no more chapters after that. It just ends, bro, because that there won't be no coming back from that. He will take them into the abyss. That's what he will do. And, and and oh my god, I hope that happens. I hope that happens so they much. They get Southgate, honestly. I will actually I'll make a party and you guys are all invited. I'll send LB the link, Northside the link. Yeah. I'm sending everyone who hates Man United the link. You're gonna have the biggest party ever. I, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. If they actually get Gareth Southgate, they were talking about Sir Jim Ratcliffe and how he's gonna <laughs> save their life. And all this, bro. I'm sorry, listen. You know the the thing is Maguire is gonna actually start starting games. <laughs> Maguire is now gonna be Man United like captain for real, for real. You get me? He's actually gonna be there, you know. Mm. Oh my lord, I love it. Brian I Shaw. love it. If that happens, in the words of LB, yeah, they're finished. It's true. Mm. But no, also, can we also speak about can we also speak about your team? Because Northside mentioned something and you kind of didn't want to speak about it, but it is true. Right. I, I I do agree that I think if um I, I think that where Liverpool are going after this season, for me, my personal opinion is um, to a team that challenges for major honours, to a team that mm -hmm. is um, in the sort of, how to say, maybe Tottenham um, position of being in and around that Champions League last position. I think you're going to go to a team that's going to be like between six, six up to third, with maybe the odd challenge here or there. Um, because at the end of the day, right, you ain't getting a better manager than Klopp. So that's a downgrade. Salah's going to leave either this summer or the summer after. Yeah? That's that whoever you replace him with, that's going to be a downgrade. Van Dijk is 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 having a good season, but he's also going to need replacing in the next probably 2 to 3 years, maybe sooner if he decides to leave. I don't see yeah how Liverpool fans can sit there on streams and on Twitter, on the comment section or whatever and say how mint Klopp is. How he's the best manager. How he's better than Pep. How all this stuff. Talk to me about Salah. How mint Salah is the best right winger this country's ever seen, etc, etc. And then say, oh, but we'll be fine. No, 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 no. That's not how football works. When Ferguson left Manchester United, there was a downfall. When Pep Guardiola leaves Manchester City, there will be a downfall. And the same will happen to you. So there's either two things that you have to, you have to accept here, in my opinion, right? And then I'll let you, I'll let you respond. You have to accept that there's going to be a downfall or you have to accept that Jurgen Klopp isn't as good as you've, as you've been saying and that actually you could get better. And in which case, you have, to, you have to accept that Jurgen Klopp maybe isn't a good as manager as you've been saying. They're, for me, the only two sort of potentials. And I think I think Jurgen Klopp has done a great job. I think you're going to get a manager who doesn't do a good a job, especially if you lose Salah, bro. I think you're going to become a team that challenges to try and get inside the, the Champions League. That's, that's just you talking from a City perspective because Jurgen Klopp will never be not as good as we thought because 
he got us our first one. And when you get your first league title in 30 years, it always is special. Just like Mancini got to your first Yeah, but if a, if a new manager comes in and wins the league straight away, surely yeah, he's going to no, be looking at that going but, on. But it's because this, no, because the new manager is, has not walked into a squad of Mignolet, Sacco, Lovren, Skirtle. The new manager has walked into a squad of Virgil van Dijk, Trent, Soboslai, McAllister, Mo Salah, etc. So it's a completely different animal. So don't, don't don't be disingenuous. Now, in terms of the the fall off, I agree with you. The team might might drop down a little bit, but it's about you controlling the fall off, right? How do you control the fall off? How do you not go from challenging to being eight? Because that's not what we want, you know. We want we want to at least control it. Let's let us put, you know, when people jump and they put like a trampoline at the bottom so they can like maintain their jump a little bit, you know. Like, how how do we trampoline it a little bit, you know? So we just don't fall off to the sewages of football. It's by making a series of right decisions that help get us there. Now, getting Michael Edwards in is the first decision. After that, you've got to get the right manager. After that, you've got to sign the right players. So I agree with you, LB. So if we sign if we sign certain players, if we if we get the wrong manager in, then we're we're doomed. But if we get the right manager, correct players in, step by step by step by step, then I don't think the fall off will be as bad as projected. That's 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 all. Yeah, I but but, but the, the 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 downfall that I'm projecting isn't even that bad. I'm well, you said third to sixth, right? Yeah. Okay, that's and not, I'm saying not, yeah, and I'm saying it would be third to fourth is good. Remaining a Champions League club, obviously, right? Yeah, that's why. That's why I think you'll be. I think you'll become a team that challenges to ch to get inside the top four. No, no, I hear that, but I'm saying that's how how we can change that is by, by making correct decisions. That's all. I don't think I don't think you can change that though, because if you lose Salah, tell me a player in world football that can come in on that right hand side to Liverpool that can replace his goals and assists. No one, no one other than Mbappe, but which is not going to happen. Uh, and but he's a massive it's... part of your team. He's a massive. We've already we already spoke. Uh, no, no. Tumper Lion, I ain't uh, sick name by the way. I ain't I ain't I ain't reaching. At this at the beginning of this stream, we literally spoke about how Diaz is ass, about how Gakpo is ass, and how our Nunes is a bit of a bozo. And we we all spoke about how mint Salah is. We all spoke about why did Klopp take Salah off? He's a talisman. He's your De Bruyne. Yeah, he's a fantastic player. He's a game winner. So you can't sit there. And say if Salah leaves, everything's going to be fine. I mean, looking at his numbers now, last year, what did he get? He got 30, 31 GA. The year before, 36 GA. You know, 29, 33, 34, 43. These are unreal numbers. If this guy leaves and Klopp leaves, I, do, I just don't see a world in which you become a team, for the, especially in the next two seasons where you challenge for the league at all. I understand what you're saying. All I'm saying is we can control the drop off. That's it. Same you way. Can same way with the drop off. Pep leaves. Yes. But, but, so but I'm not saying you that you'll have Pep a mad leave. drop off anyway. Okay. But how long you when you Pep leaves? Say, say that again. Sorry, not sorry. How long? How long would you get back to the top? Because there are a lot of things that go against you. Like you, you got a, a similar project to Arsenal, self-sustaining system. When you guys on your way to the top were selling big, you sold big and you invested very, very well. But the most pivotal thing was the manager that you had. You can't yes. you can't compete financially, and you're still in that situation. So I don't see the manager's going to get you to the top. I don't see you know the recruitment is very questionable around that. I I don't think that I'm taking you from the conversation of being you know title contenders year in year out. You're going to drop from that, and I don't know how long it's going to take you to go back up because you guys. I don't see what manager you like, and you like to play as a, a, a specific type of football. A lot of managers that are out there that are very good managers don't necessarily play the Liverpool style of football. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. who's going to come in to get you back to that level? I think it's a lot easier for Man United to become greater. I can't lie. People will look at it in terms of teams, but when you look at Man United, yeah, but that's because they're it, currently in the fluid. The only way is up. As soon as Klopp leaves, as soon as Klopp leaves, yeah, this is my reasoning. As soon as Klopp leaves, yeah. You guys now need to invest properly, get the right players, and they have to bang because you can't just yeah. keep replacing. Man United never had a financial issue. Man United, in terms of squad, of course, they're, they're, they're below you. But Man United already got the finances. So Man United just need the structure, which they're now having with Ineos. And then once they do that, they just need the right man. And all of a sudden, boom. It's a lot faster transition doing it like that instead of being right manager, 
you know, going for 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 players on a on a cheap budget compared to the big elite clubs, and then make sure that every signing bangs. You, it's very hard to get players at every signing bangs, and you did that under Klopp. That's a very big ask for the next manager. I agree. A, and people people underestimate that, but it ain't that easy. It ain't that easy to go every time you sign up. Look at look at Man City. They signed Doku. We're still a big question mark if he'll come good or not. If he's going to be of the level. You know, they've had some signers. Alvarez, still a question mark. Will he be of the level that they need to for the level that they are? You can expect that they are, but you can't. It, it's up in the air. But the one thing that they've got, if Alvarez doesn't work out, they'll buy another one. You know yes. what I'm saying? The same with Man United. You guys haven't got that. And I know that because my club is like that. And that is why I'm so critical of every signing that we have. I think with Liverpool, it's not going to be as fast nor as smooth as you guys think it is. I really don't. Because when you look at the managerial options, on top of that, you look at the striking options as well. And I don't know, bro. I don't I don't see this being as when smooth. When you say as not as smooth as you think it is, like I, I don't think we're going to come back next season and, and to actually challenge for the league. Huh? Like, I don't think it's like we're... I, I don't think we'll challenge for the league next season without Klopp, right? But I'm saying we can at least soften the blow a little bit. When I say soften the blow a little bit, I'm saying, okay, for example, me and you both saw and LB when Ferguson left, right? How Man United went into just the abyss. We all saw when... Um, oh, what was his name, man? Who's, who's the long time... When Wenger, when Wenger left. Mm -hmm. How it went downhill as well with Unai Emery and with Arteta for a long mm -hmm. ass time. Now, what we can do is learn from those experiences because smart people learn from other people's mistakes. Now, how yeah. can we soften the blow? Get Michael Edwards in? Okay, that's only first step one. After that, you've got to make, hire the right manager. After that, you've got to make the right decisions. Now, as an example, Northside and LB, just an example. If Bayer Leverkusen win the league this season with Xabi Alonso, that's a manager that, just like Klopp, won the Bundesliga with a team other than Bayern and broke the Bayern dominance. So that's something that obviously will help us if we get him as an example. So I'm I'm I I believe that there will be a drop off. I believe that Liverpool will fall off a little bit, but how much we fall off is dependent on a series of the decisions that we're going to make: transfers, manager, and uh, the, the yeah, sporting. That's director. correct. But you accept that there's going to be a fall off, and that's the point. That yes, but it's yeah. dependent. No, but 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 like respectfully, LB, there's fall off, and then there's fall off. Like yeah, you know, no, I don't like, expect you to fall off. Bro, like I, Chelsea I, fall off. I, I, I just Chelsea expect you fell to... off. Chelsea, nah, you ain't gonna do that though. You, know, you ain't gonna do. I don't think you're gonna do that, bro. Because yeah, you have, yeah, you have, you have the likes of Van Dijk, who's likely not to leave in the summer. You have Allison. Like these guys will will mean that you won't lose too many matches. I just think that maybe next season. I don't know. I, like I say, I just think you'll be a team that's top four, challenging to get in the top, top four. four. I think top yeah. four will be your aim. Top four and then go for all the cups, basically. That that should be the, the, the aim. Anyway, let me just read the super chats before we get out of here because I know Northside and LB have to go as well. Pana, no, where does that, LB went back to that. that? That was a good one, LB. Yeah. <laughs> He didn't, let that one, he didn't let that one slide. Nah, the guy <laughs> wanted to just, just, just mock Southgate at Man United and then just dip, innit? Yeah, that's not, that's not happening, bro. Oh, there you are. There you are. Fair. I just wanted to mock Man United. I wanted to bring us all together, but clearly you're just the enemy forever. Okay, then. I'll be, I remember this. Um, you better win the Premier League if you don't. Honestly, me block me, telling you right now. Northside, I ain't gonna say nothing to him, but you block me, telling me you right now. Why? Why? Fucking bro! If if Arteta wins the league, bro, yeah. No, no, no. Forget Arteta. All this. I don't your manager. I don't care. Yeah, I game. don't care. I don't care about Arteta if Arteta wins the league. I don't what care about none of that stuff. Gonna be don't let to me be win the league title, from. LB. Don't yeah. let you, you better hope that Arteta doesn't win that Premier League. And and my God, if he manages to do a UCL Premier League back to back, your manager's getting absolutely cooked. No just, problem. Just I will congratulate just them. Know that. Don't worry. Clock the floor. Panel. Yeah, that'll be his nickname. <laughs> Can I just read the super chat, LB? You're gonna disrespect the people who spend you, their you hard hard on me, bro. You can't Thank keep doing. You always start arguments, yeah? And then, <laughs> and then oh, can I read the super chat out, bro? This person said... That's not money. true. You start arguments, bro. You just went back to the argument that I ended to laugh at Southgate. Exactly. Panel, where does Klopp rank uh, among all-time Premier League managers? For me, one Fergie, two Pep, three Mourinho, four Wenger, five Klopp. Thoughts? Um, he's definitely right to have those four in front of Klopp. Um... Yeah, I think I think possibly fifth. Not nothing springs to mind like off the top of my head um, at the moment. 
Northside, <clears> side, you got anyone else who could put a, a head of clock to wind for some up? Oh. There you are. Uh, um, to, uh, to be uh, to be fair, Dilly Ding, Dilly Dong done close to what your manager's done so far. One Premier League. <laughs> You can say that with a straight face. Because the thing is, Wenger had more time than Klopp. But Wenger's first 10 years, he won three Premier Leagues. Yeah, your manager's yeah, like, coming, up to, coming yeah. up to 10 years and he's had one Prem, one Champions League. Do you put the Champions League over those two Prems? I don't know. Depends. If you're just doing Prem, uh, Prem legacy only, might, isn't it? To be fair. Some people might. Like, you know, big up Mo as an example. Mo, Mo really likes, the, really takes one UCL as two Prems. But look, for me, I think this is a fair list from Gagandik. Like, I, I think Klopp fifth is fair. Now, if Klopp wins another league title, if if Klopp wins this season on his way out, maybe this changes. This changes if yeah, Klopp that changes, wins. Yeah, yeah. He goes about Venga, yeah, yeah. changes. But right now, I feel like this is fair, um, you know. But me, uh, on popular opinion, I would not have Pep that high. Big up to you, though, um, Gagandik. Big up to Inter Surfer says it's instantly Southgate is third best manager in the in the Premier League if he signs for Man United. <laughs> Guire gets a new contract as well. We are I'm gonna do so much Southgate prop. Please, please, I hope no Man United fan who works with me is listening to this right now. If Southgate becomes Man United manager, I will be the biggest gaslighter in this universe. I will gaslight every single Manchester United fan. To the obtain degree, you thought I'm gaslighting Chelsea with Poch? Oh, wait and see. I'm gonna tell them it's not Southgate's fault. It's all on the structure. It's all on Simon Ratcliffe. It's all on the transfers. It's on the players. I am gonna gaslight the crap out of Man United fans. I need it. I need it. And when Southgate becomes Man United manager, I will celebrate. So yeah, big up to you. Um, Thank you, Winter Surf. It's up to you, Andrew. Uh, I reject Southgate from before he becomes manager. <laughs> this will show Jim is just an English glazer. Jobs for the boys, he said. That's a nepotism. You get me? Just let's just get a couple of guys, some of the jobs and stuff. Yo, I'm very with you. Whether you reject him or not, though, if Man United get him, there's nothing you can do about it. So hold that. Hold that, Stephen. Hold that. You, you know how you know how Lee Gunner was Arteta at out before Arteta even got the job. If I was a United yeah. fan, I'd be Southgate out before he even got the job. <laughs> yes, I would. If he, if no, I, if I, I found out that this fraud was coming to my, my club, I would, I, bro, I would be fuming if this guy was even linked with my <laughs> club. Like, he's a disgrace, honestly. Like people, people overhype this guy. Oh, but he got you to a final. He got you to semi-finals. If you actually have a look at his runs, yeah, to the finals and actual like like when he got far, his runs have been very, very, very favourable. You crazy? Very favourable, bro. Very favourable, bro. What? He actually beat Ukraine on the way as well. Ukraine, a bad Germany. I still yeah, that's what, it, yeah, that's play. what I'm saying. People go Germany beat Germany. Germany was shit, man. Like, listen, I'll be buzzing because I remember that night was class, but like, let's let's not pretend Germany were like peak Germany. They were ass. So I'm just saying, yeah. like, yeah, I think he'd be very fortunate, personally. Edward's signings as well. Nabi Keita, Minamino, Ben Davies, Dominic Solanke, Ozan Kabak, Adrian, Sepp van der Berg, Andy Lonergan. First of all, you mentioning Andy Lonergan is so shameless. He was literally a 37-year-old goalkeeper that we signed to fill a quota. And I'd rather him over Adrian anyway. Um, the second the second thing is, look, Northside mentioned it, and that's why I didn't disagree with him. On transfers, we have to be spot on. At least if we make four transfers, three have to bang type thing. That's it. So, like, that's basically what, what I'd say on, on that. Um, my Chabi Alonso Copium rejects a downfall. But, but, but you see, that's why I'm saying controlled downfall. What is controlled downfall? Chabi Alonso won the, won, the, won the Bundesliga with Bayer Leverkusen, does really well. Comes in, establishes the system. We finish third, fourth. That's fine. But if we finish 11th, 10th, 9th, 8th, that's not fine. That's the difference, you know? So, But it doesn't always yeah. translate, though, Hussam. Gerard was brought into Aston Villa after winning the Scottish League. It didn't translate. Look at where he got that team to. And then and then, and then, then Unai Emery, Mr. Good Evening, takes over, a proper manager. And now look at what they've done this season. Do you know what I mean? In You're taking so many shots at me today, uh, Northside. Steven no, Gerrard. I'm just saying. You know, I'm just saying, you know I'm that's just saying, my right? hero as well, Stevie G. Leave huh? Stevie G alone. He manages Al Ittifaq in Saudi Arabia. Why do you care about the Al Ittifaq manager? You fraud. Leave him alone. He's in the deserts right now, chilling. You get Listen, you, chilling. you know, should get someone like a Simeone and forget about the football. Think about the trophies. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Simeone will leave Atletico though. 
Bro, throw the bag at him, man. Give him the make him listen. We put Arsene Wenger being the the the, the most the the highest um the highest uh, earning manager, manager for, yeah. for ten years of uh, failure. So listen, at the end of the day, it can be done. We have got Premier League money, man. You know what I'm saying. But for anyone that plays the way that you guys want to play, the options are very are very scarce. So just you go know, and no, get no, Simeone. Simeone, man. Simeone, though. Simeone is the I biggest Simeone, paid manager I going. Zidane, but I don't think that attainable. That's the problem. Yeah, Simeone is the biggest paid manager in world football as well. Yeah. He's, on, he's on more than Pep. He's on more, That's why when Arsene like says throw the bag, he earns a bag already. Yeah, he, he already gets it. though. He already and he walks in Atletico, he's like the most powerful man in the world, you know, over there. So I don't know if he... Listen, the CEO person. of a multi-million pound company earns more than most of the people, most of the employees. They deserve it. That's true. That's true. That's they true. deserve it. Throw really the bag, man. You know who the, the fourth most paid manager is in world football? Who? Steven Gerrard. Oh, but he's at Saudi, isn't it? He's at yeah, up Can I show you this list? Yeah, yeah. My manager, yeah, I share it. If Arteta's in the top 10, I swear down. He is. Um, Did you share screen? You can see that? Yeah. Give us one more zoom and I think we'll be good. Oh, he's just outside it. Yes. Inzaghi. That's what I'm saying. Inter yeah. Milan's manager. That's who I want next. If Arteta bottles it, I want Judge Mo's manager, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? I want that guy, bro. I cannot believe Gerard earns more money than all these that's, guys as well. That's wild, isn't it? Gerard Steam makes more money than Ancelotti, brother. Bamba class. Yo, Poch is eating nice, man. Look at he, is. he is. Crazy, <laughs> isn't it? How is Ancelotti only on 9.6 million like at Real Madrid? That's crazy, isn't it? That's this is actually a mad list when you think about it as well. It is crazy. This is not a mad list. Thomas I love Tuchel. how they just put Arteta on 11th there just to force him in. in, in so, just to like, you know, show like where he is. <laughs> God, I love, I, it's that crazy point. how Tuchel is on 10.6 as well. Yeah. This is mad. This Yo, is Max Allegri is on these, man. Yeah. I didn't know what Max Allegri is on that no, one. Northside, my only point is I would take those managers. I just don't think they're attainable. You tell me right now, if you ask me, Hussam, all, all options open. Name one manager, you take Zinedine Zidane right now. Bring me Zidane. So I'm not one of those who's like style of play and all this. That's not what I'm bothered about. But I'm just saying, in order to smooth the transition with an attainable manager, I think. You you think really you think Ancelotti you th no you think Simeone is as loyal to Aleti as Zidane is to Real Madrid? No 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 no. I think Zidane is entertainable because he doesn't want to manage in England, France national mm. team. I think that oh, waits for it. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't. You don't want England, man. Plus, Asan Madrid didn't really arrive. Respect for saying disingenuous correctly. Can you stop, Carlito? Me and you are going to pull up and exchange hands and fight one day. Every time I make an English word uh, pronunciation correctly, you start telling me thank you for pronouncing it correctly. My brother, I speak English. It's been three years on YouTube. Three years on YouTube, bro. Alhamdulillah. Big up to you guys. We hit 27.5K yesterday. I can speak English. I can speak Say it in Arabic. Say it in Arabic. Say it in Arabic. Disingenuous, yeah. Ghair Sadak, that's it. Let's see if he can get that one right. Exactly. Oh, can you say that, Carlito? You fraud. <laughs> no, you can't. No, you can't. Um, final super chat to Sam. You remember, I requested Sir Jim to take over from Qatar. Now I want Southgate. I'm all about the Southgate. Hey, I'm all about the Southgate as well. You get me Southgate. Let's get that going. You get me Manchester United, the link up. I'll be there. I'm going to gaslight all the United fans how this is a great hiring and how he got England back up on its feet after not qualifying for the Euros and how he qualified for, for the finals and he got to a World Cup semi and he done all that stuff. Let's go Southgate to Man United. I'm going to be top row just cheering for Southgate. Let's go. I cannot wait how he just ruins your football club. Big up to all of you guys. We're going to wrap it up here. Make sure you guys are slapping the like button. Make sure you guys are subscribing. We have 550 people, even us ending the video. We still have 550 people watching us, guys. Let's get to 300 likes, 350 likes ASAP. So please slap the like button on your way out. Make sure you guys are subscribing. We're literally nine likes away from 300. Big up to Josh, Smoke, Jack, even you, Chicken Wing. Big up to you for actually showing face once in, since forever. Frankie, Steven, uh, Hussam's biggest fan, Enigma, Gagandeep, Winter Surfer, Nilot Pal, uh, and my guy, um, Dan Carlito. And then and then Amina says, LB has a good eye for, for football. Following you now, hashtag Salafan. So from now on, get me, Amina. Amina, I want you to be a spy. 
Anytime LB says anything bad about Salah, you have to tell me. Because I will cook him. If he says one bad word about Salah, I'll cook him. Thank you, Amina. Shukran. Um, speaking of LB, you want to follow LB? Make sure, guys, go follow LB on It's LB. The channel is in the description. Make sure, guys, go subscribe to Northside LDM. The channel is in the description. Copyright infringement strike coming to both of these guys for reacting to my video. <laughs> gotta hit uh, them with copyright infringement. Both these frauds are gonna get hit with copyright soon. You get me? But right here, Northside LDM, It's LB. Both both channels are in the descriptions. You bunch of lazy bastards. Just click X on the live, like the video, and then do this thing where you click more. You see this more button? Click it. Boom. Both channels are there. You don't even have to do anything. Just click it's LB, Northside LDN. Subscribe to both. Wallah, it's easy. Um, anyway, gonna be back inshallah at 11 p.m. UK time for the A-listers. Big up to Northside, big up to LB. Thank you guys so much. We're gonna see you guys back at 11, inshallah. Peace.